Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, image smoother. We're given a two dimensional grid that can be a variable size. And we just wanna apply a pretty simple algorithm to every single cell in this grid. So for example, this cell over here, seven, we want to replace it with the average of the nine closest cells to it. So like the three by three square around this position. Basically, we would take one plus two plus three plus six, seven, eight plus 11, 12 and 13, add all of those together and then divide the result by nine because there were nine elements. So to take the average, we divide by nine and we want to round down in this case. So if it's a decimal value, we are gonna round that value down. Now, of course, not every single cell is going to have a three by three square. Like for example, this corner over here, if we were to look at the closest cells to it, some of them happen to be out of bounds. For those, we pretty much ignore them, but we take the average pretty much in the same way. So with these existing cells, we take all four of them, add them together. This time though, we would not divide by nine. We're not taking the average of nine elements, we're taking the average of four. So we divide that by four and we still round down. And that new value that we have, we would end up putting it in this corner spot. Conceptually, this problem isn't super difficult. In terms of code, how exactly are we going to implement it? Because if we try to implement it in place, like if I were to first look at this cell and then replace it with like the average of the values, and I do that, then I wanna do the same thing here. I wanna replace it with the average of the closest values to it. If we try to do that, we're gonna end up looking at the value over here. It's not the same value that it originally was. It's not gonna be a one anymore. So we're gonna have a problem if we try to implement this in place, at least if we do it in a naive way. I will show you in the second half of the video that we actually can solve this problem in place. But for now, let's just create another copy of this grid and then fill that in as we solve this problem and then we'll end up returning that grid. Now, the only hard part in my opinion, at least for like a beginner, would be for a cell like this one, how do we even get all of the neighbors. You could kind of hard code it, but that would take a lot of code. The easiest way is actually to do a nested loop. Like if this is the position that we're given, and let's say the coordinates of it happen to be R, C for row column, we then would just run a nested for loop starting from here, going through this row, then going through this row, and then going through this row. And that will allow us to accumulate all nine of those values, and then we can divide that by nine and get the total. How do we do that? Well, if you look, the top left corner is row minus one and column minus one. The bottom right corner is row plus one and column plus one. So we can kind of run a nested loop where the row iterates over these values and the column iterates over these values. One last thing to mention, if we were to do that over here, we would get some values that are out of bounds. It would be easy for us to detect that a coordinate is out of bounds because we can verify like this is within the range of the size of this grid. But one thing to notice is when we accumulate these four values, we wanna keep track that we only had four values because then we would end up dividing by four. So that's just a little catch. With all that said though, we can code this up. What do you think the time complexity is gonna be? Well, one, we're definitely going to have to iterate over this entire grid. Let's say the dimensions are n by m. So we're gonna have to do that. And then for every single cell, we're gonna have to potentially iterate nine times. Now nine is a constant, so it doesn't really change the overall big O time complexity. This would be overall time complexity. And since we are creating another grid of the same size, the memory complexity is gonna be the same, actually. It's gonna be n times m. At least for the first solution, we will find a way to optimize the space down to constant time. But now let's code this up. First, with any type of 2D grid problem, I just like to get the dimensions of the grid, and that's pretty easy to do in this case, just like this. And then we want to create that two-dimensional grid that we're 
going to end up returning that copy and I'm going to initialize it with all zeros. It doesn't really matter what you initialize it with. In Python, it's kind of weird to initialize a 2D grid. So here with the first array, we're going to multiply it by the number of columns because that's going to tell us how many values go inside of a row. And then how many rows do we have? That's going to be like this. So this is called list comprehension in Python if you've never seen it before but basically it gives us a two dimensional grid of the size of this matrix, it's all zeros. And that's gonna be what we end up returning. But before we do that, we actually do have to uh, populate it. So let's iterate over the entire input grid and we can do that like this. Now is the part where we are going to iterate over that three by three square kind of centered around these coordinates. So I'm gonna use different variables for that. I'm gonna have I in range from, like we said, row minus one all the way up until row plus one. The only thing is with Python, this range function, it will actually stop here, but not include the last coordinate. So if we want to iterate from here, including this, we have to actually set this to row plus two. We're gonna do the same thing down here for j in range column minus one all the way up until column plus one but it's not plus one it has to be a plus two and then what we're gonna do is basically keep track of the total for now so i'm gonna have a variable up here i'm gonna call it total i'm initially gonna set it to zero and for every cell so the image at these coordinates i j we're going to add that to the running total so far. And we're also gonna keep track of the count. So I'm gonna have a second variable for count and I'm gonna increment it by one every single time. But this code is not complete because right now what this would do is count would always be set to nine because we're always gonna iterate nine times. Well, one thing we haven't done is validated the current coordinate. To do that, I'm gonna go here and say if I is less than zero, if it's out of bounds, or if I is equal to the number of rows, it's also out of bounds. Or if J is less than zero, or if J is equal to the number of columns. In any of those cases, we've gone out of bounds. Then I'm just gonna continue to the next iteration of the loop so that we don't ever even execute this part. That way we don't update the total or update the count. Because if we tried updating the total, of course, that would get us an index out of bounds error. Now, last thing, after we've gone through that three by three square, we do have to take the total and calculate the average from it with the count. And this is what we're gonna set to the same coordinate, the row column coordinate in the result, not in the input matrix, but in the result matrix. And then that's what we're gonna end up returning. So let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, it does, and it's pretty efficient. It's about as efficient as we can get in terms of runtime, but the memory complexity can actually be improved, even if it might not end up being reflected in leak code because the input size of this matrix isn't super significant. But the main reason we can actually do that is if you go here and read the fine print in the constraints, you see that the value of an image is always gonna be less than or equal to 255. And let me show you why that's important. 255 is a special number because it's actually two to the power of eight minus one. Why is that important? Well, take note of this value eight. That means in binary, it's gonna look like this, four ones, and everything before that is gonna be a zero. This is convenient because we only need eight bits to store this number. Okay, well, why does that help us? Well, depending on the language you're using, most integers are implemented, I think, as 32-bit integers. In Python, it's not entirely the case, but in most languages, you'll have at least 32 bits to work with. So the original problem we had of why we had to allocate a new matrix in the first place was we couldn't store the total, like the average in a cell, because if we do that, then if we wanted to calculate like the average of this guy, he needs the average of all of its neighbors. But if we overwrote those, we can't get the original value back. But if we have space here, we can actually store the original value 
in the first eight bits like it's already there. So we can leave those bits untouched. But when we calculate the average for five, for example, uh, let's take all these values and let's say I think it's 27 and then divide that by four. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the value is. I think it'll be something like six. We can then take that new value that let's say is six and store it here in these bits. So in a way, we'll actually be having two values stored in every single position in the grid. That works, so then every time we want to calculate like the average of this position, we can get the original value from the first eight bits, which will allow us to calculate the average. That's great, and then by the time we want to return the entire resulting grid, how do we do that? Because we know that we store the average here. So when we do that, we will have to, for every single cell, basically eliminate these eight bits or just take these and shift them to the right by eight bits. That's exactly what we're going to do. The only thing I haven't talked about is how are we going to take an arbitrary number and store it here and make sure that we don't touch these first eight bits. Well, first of all, we will take that number and shift it to the left by eight bits. For example, if we had a number that looks like this, one, zero, one in binary, and then we take it and shift it to the left by eight bits, that's basically saying we're gonna have eight zeros that come after it. So it'll look like this. Sorry if the handwriting is bad. But then if we have that, we can take this number and do an operation. I think we can actually do either exclusive or or logic or because if we take this number and run exclusive or on it with this number what you're going to find is that these bits whatever they are whether it's a one here or a zero here they are going to stay as they are because we know that all of these are zeros they are not going to like conflict with anything here and we know that there's always going to be zeros over here because this number is only going to be up to eight bits large so with exclusive or we'll make sure that these values end up being placed here. That's how we're gonna handle pretty much most of the bit manipulation. It all kind of centers around the fact that the max integer in any of these cells is gonna be this, which happens to fit within eight bits. So knowing all of that, we do not need to allocate an extra matrix so we can reduce the time complexity from big O of N down to constant space. Now let's code up this more optimal solution. So I'm gonna keep the existing code as is because then we don't have to like rewrite everything. I'm gonna get rid of this result matrix and I'm gonna rename the return value to image. Now let's focus on the lines of code that we are going to change. So first of all, we want to continue to compute the total among like those nine, that three by three grid, those nine cells. We want to compute the total, but we don't know for sure that this position, that this cell has not been overwritten. This might not be the original value that it was. So what do we do with it? We just want the first eight bits from this value. We just want the original portion of that value. How do we get that? I guess that's the part that we didn't talk about, but think about it. When we have a number... Let's say we had eight bits like this, eight bits, and then we put any value over here. It could be like a 101 or anything else. This portion is always going to be greater than the number 255 because 255 is what this represents. If we add anything past those first eight bits, it's always going to be greater than 255. So in other words, we want to eliminate everything before here. So we want to take this and mod it by 256. That's another way of saying that we want to eliminate everything before these first eight bits. So that's what we do to get the original value so that we can accumulate the total. Now, with the total, we are still going to divide it by the count to get the average of it. But now we're not going to assign it to the result. We're going to assign it to the image to keep it in place. Now, remember, this itself is not what we want to add to the image. We actually want to take this and shift it to the left by 
So that's what we want to add here. But for us to add it here, we can't just do like the simple operation of plus. We have to either use the logic or or logic XOR. I'm just going to do XOR. It really doesn't matter which one you use. We can do it this way. And I think logic or is like this. So I'm going to keep it XOR, but that's pretty much it. This is what we're doing. We're taking that and storing it in the bits that go after the first eight bits. So we're almost done now, but remember, we can't just return the matrix now because we're actually storing two values in each spot. So if we only want the new value for each spot, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna iterate over every cell in the output matrix, and for every cell, we're going to make sure that we take that cell and shift the bits to the right by eight. That will get rid of the original value that's stored and make sure that we only return the new value, which was the average that we ended up computing. So we're kind of in a way reversing the shift left that we did here. We're shifting it to the right by eight bits. This is the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. It looks like the memory complexity isn't better, at least according to leak code, but that's really not the case. And we know why because of like the way big O works. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.